Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about Curve Editor Enhancements. So a couple of enhancements we've made to the Curve Editor uh, for use with the Path function. Okay, so on the screen right now we have a very simple project. We have this UFO just kind of revolving around this nondescript house. Pretty simple stuff. I have loop on, so we're basically looping through the project uh, as we play along the playhead right here. And let's just stop that, go back to frame 1. And let's take a look at the Curve Editor. So the first thing I'm going to do is change my workspace to an animation workspace, since we're only going to be animating in this uh, tutorial. So I'm going to go up here to Window and Workspace and select Animation. You can also use the Control-3 hotkey. Pretty useful little uh, hotkey there. And I'm going to open up my viewport. You can go up here to Plugin, or open up my uh, Curve Editor, rather. You can go to Plugins, Curve Editor, and just open it up that way. And if it's not docked, I, prefer, I tend to prefer to dock it on the right-hand side here by clicking and dragging the title bar. And let's just close the mini viewport, modify panel, scene manager, we don't need all that stuff. Let's move this over to about halfway, and we'll move our timeline up a little bit here as well. So we can kind of see what's in the timeline. All right, something like that should be okay. All right, so what we're going to focus on is the, uh, the path of uh, the uh, UFO around the house here. So I'm going to just select the uh, UFO there, and I'm going to right-click the UFO and go down here to Curve Editor and open up my Constraint Track, okay? You can see it'll open up the constraint track in our curve editor there. And in the mothership node, we can open up that as well by clicking here and clicking constraint. So it doesn't open automatically. Okay. And you can see we have the path position, which is the constraint. And we also have offsets, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Okay. And we can also go here and just uh, reframe the uh, curves in our scene right now. Okay. So here's our path position. This is the constraint. And then our offsets are down here for rotation and scale. And we'll deal with those a little bit later. But let's focus on path position right now. So we have this really nice, smooth ease in and ease out curve, you can see, from frame 1 to frame 200. And our UFO is completing one complete revolution around our house. Okay, you can see the last value here. If we click on this last keyframe, the value is 100. That means it's 100% of the way through the path. What we can do is we can change that value to something like uh, 300. For example, just enter it in like that, and this curve will go way up, and we can reframe it like this, and there you go. So what happens now is, throughout the duration of the project, the UFO will revolve three times around the house, as opposed to one time, so 300%. Okay, there you go. You can click and drag this as well if you want. You can click and drag the keyframe. We can click and drag it to like, uh, you know, 150%, for example. Make sure it's at frame 200 there. Around 150, 149. And then basically what will happen, it'll go around one and a half times. All right, just like that. Okay, so let's just go ahead and enter in the value of uh, 100. Kind of keep this thing uh, normal there. And uh, let's reframe it as well. So you can see here we have this nice, like I mentioned, ease in and ease out curve. If we want to adjust this curve to something more linear, for example, we can go ahead and click it and make sure we go up here to linear and just select a linear curve. All right. And now we're going to have a very uniform movement around. There's not going to be any ease in and ease out. It's going to be consistent movement throughout the entire project. Okay, so that's one way to do that. And uh, you can also go back to change it to auto as well, which is the uh, normal curve. And we'll keep linear for now. Okay, so next thing I'm going to talk about is how to add a keyframe onto your curve and uh, customize it yourself. So let's go over here to like frame, about frame 100 here. I'm going to go ahead and select this icon here, which is Add Keyframe. Okay, and once I mouse over my uh, curve, just like about there, I can click and add a keyframe at frame 100. And what I can do now is if I change to the Move uh, tool right here, I can move this, you know, wherever I want. And we can create various effects like that. Okay, you can also, uh, if you can't see any handlebars on your keyframe, you can go up here and select View Handle or Show Handles, okay? And when we use the handlebars, you can create some really wacky looking, you know, curves just like this. Let's try this, for example. So if I go like this, what's going to happen is throughout the duration of our project, it's going to go back a little bit, just like that, and then forward. So it's like hesitating. Should I go all the way? And then, whoop. And as you can see, it follows this curve position over here on the right. Okay, so pretty simple stuff. Uh, again, you can adjust this curve to whatever you want using your uh, your handlebars. But I'm just going to go ahead and delete that for now and give ourselves a linear curve one more time. Okay, let's take a little, let's take a little bit of a look at rotation now. So, uh, if I go ahead to path offsets and I open up rotation, we have rotation X, Y, and Z. Okay, 
the first thing we're going to focus on is the Z rotation, which is the little uh, blue curve down here. You can see this uh, basically zero to zero throughout the duration of our project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the rotation at frame at the last frame. So I'm going to go to the last one of my project, click here, and I'm going to basically just, just click on this keyframe right here, the last keyframe. I'm going to change this to a value of 720. Okay, you can see it skyrockets way up again. We'll reframe it. So what's happening here is we're rotating 720 degrees as our UFO proceeds through the path. Okay, so at the last frame, we will have completed two complete rotations. It's 360 times 2 is 720. Okay, so let's take a look at it. Let's go ahead and play back. You can see the UFO slowly rotating. Okay, it rotates two complete revolutions before the one revolution around the, uh, the nondescript house there. Okay, if I scrub through the timeline, you can kind of see the yellow selection box rotating just like that. Okay, so you can adjust that to whatever you want. Like 360 will only be one revolution and so on and so forth. Okay, pretty simple stuff. Let's take a look now at adding in some X and Y rotation. So I'm just going to go ahead and shift select all of these so we can see all the curves at once. And what I'm going to do is as we proceed through the timeline, I'm going to go to frame 50 here, which is... 25% of the way through. What I'm going to do is press the E hotkey, and it's going to bring up my rotation gizmo on my uh, UFO there. And we're going to rotate along the green Y axis, okay, just like this. And you'll see that we have the green Y axis slowly coming up here on the bottom. The curve is slowly adjusting like that, and we're flying just like that. Let's go to frame 100 here, and at frame 100, I'm going to restore the uh, uh, green axis back down to around zero. We'll uh, focus on the specifics later. And let's bring the y axis or the x axis up now, the red x axis. Okay, just like this. And then we'll go to frame 150. And we will bring this red axis back to normal and the y axis curving this direction. Okay, so now we have this cool looking curve like this down here. If we deselect the uh, z, only select the x and y, we can go ahead and frame these. And here we can see the curve for our green y-axis and the red x-axis, okay? Let's go ahead and play it back and see what it looks like real quick. So it kind of just rotates like that along here. And you can see it's kind of rotating a little bit. It's kind of a little bit wobbly. And that's because we haven't, we don't have exact values on a couple of these keyframes here. And I'll show you which ones. So the first thing I want to do is this middle keyframe for the y. We don't really need this because at this point here, we don't really need to worry about the y. Okay, let's just go ahead and delete that keyframe. Just like that, so we have a much smoother transition. Make sure that this keyframe right here is, we're going to change it to a value of 30. Keep it consistent, just nice and easy there. Okay, 30, and this value down here, this Y value down here, we're going to keep it at a value of negative 30. Okay, just to keep things organized and uh, exact. All right, and these two keyframes right here, this X keyframe right here at frame 50, we want this one to be zero. We don't want any X rotation right here. We don't want any X rotation right here. We only want the green Y rotation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two keyframes right here, enter in a value of zero, and press enter. We can restore those back down to zero. You can click and drag and modify two keyframes at a time. Okay, and the last item of business here is this X uh, value right here at frame 100. We can just change this to 30 to keep it consistent throughout the project there. Okay, so now we have this nice smooth curve with consistent values and we'll have this sort of movement like that just along our path. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, so we can create that kind of cool looking uh, UFO rotation and almost like drifting <laughs> as it goes around the uh, the path here. Okay, so that's rotation and that's how you can modify, you know, the various uh, keyframes and everything like that. Again, you can use the handlebars and whatever you want to modify them separately. Let's go ahead now and take a look at scale. What I'm going to try and do here is create sort of a cartoon effect with scale. So let's go ahead to open up the scale track right here. And I'm going to select all the uh, scale uh, X, Y, and Z axes here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at reframing this first. You can see the scale is consistent. But before I do that, I'm going to go to rotation Z. And I'm going to just uh, reframe this. I wanted to delete all those middle uh, keyframes here since we don't need those on the rotation Z. Okay, and again, play back. There you go. There you go. Okay, good enough. So uh, back down to scale here. So scale, we can just, uh, you know, shift select all the uh, keyframes right here. And we're not going to be worried about this keyframe. Okay, for this, we're only going to be worried about 
three separate keyframes, beginning, middle, and end. Okay, so what I'm going to do is at the beginning here, what I'm going to do is click on this keyframe over here, and I'm going to press the R hotkey on my uh, um, UFO here, and I can click and drag on the R hotkey, and you can see that the value, the scale, will go up on all of our axes because we're using the little yellow um, uniform scale in the middle there. Okay, a little gizmo there. So what I'm going to do is just uh, uh, take that value up. I'm going to click and select all these keyframes. We'll take it up to a consistent value of like 200. Okay, just like that. And what we're going to do at frame uh, 50 here, the second uh, keyframe, we're going to change that value to 50. Okay, for all the keyframes. So then when we get to uh, you know this value right here, you can see it's going to look a lot further away, a more dynamic kind of cartoony uh, simulation of distance. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll go to the last frame here again and change all these keyframes to a value of 300. Or not 300, 200. There we go. Okay, we can reframe all these. Oops, let's make sure we uh, select them all. Reframe, there we go. Okay, so here's our uh, scale curve right here now. Okay, so if we play back, we'll have a nice, uh, you know, kind of weird looking... Uh, exaggerated distance cartoony effect for our UFO there. Okay, let's take a look now. Uh, now that we've talked about uh, scale and rotation, let's talk about a couple of the uh, key uh, usability enhancements. And the first thing we're going to talk about is the match playhead uh, feature. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is let's take a look at all these different uh, scales here. So um, I'm just going to scroll my mouse button down here. And let's go ahead and take a look at the X, for example. By the way, if I wanted to move my keyframes strictly vertical or strictly horizontal with constraints, I can hold the shift key before I do so. So if I hold shift and click, I'm going to move that uh, scale X value to the left. And I can move it up along the X axis like this, or you can see it'll be constrained to vertical or horizontal movement. Okay, so holding the shift key before you do that will allow you to, uh, you know, move it just along these values right here. Okay. So say, for example, I'm just going to shift select all these keyframes. We just basically moved uh, these keyframes separately. Um, you know, say, for example, I messed around. I want to keep them, uh, I want to keep them organized. I want to keep them at the same uh, frame. So at frame 100 here, what I'm going to do is go up here to key. And of course, we need to make sure we select those keyframes first. So I'll click and drag and select them all. Go up to key and we can go ahead and select match playhead. And that'll basically move all the all the uh, keyframes to match the playhead here. Okay, so whatever frame the playhead is on, it'll take all those keyframes that you selected and put them right where the playhead is. Okay, in this case it's frame 100. If I want to like frame 80, for example, I can do the same thing. Key and match playhead. And they'll all be set to, you can see right here, I'll be set to frame 80. Okay, let's do the same thing. Let's just click and drag, select them all. Back to frame 100. Just wanted to show you that uh, match playhead feature. One more time. There we go, match playhead. Pretty useful little function there. Now uh, as for selection of your objects or your items here on the uh, on the menu, what you can do is uh, you can just go ahead and maybe we'll select, you know, X and uh, control select rotation Z, rotation Y, we'll frame them all together. There you go, a couple beautiful curves. And if we wanted to like invert the selection, so if we wanted to select everything except for what's on, what's currently selected, we can right click and select uh, invert selection there and uh, right click and invert selection again. Okay, um, you can also right click and select all just like that. Okay, now in addition I want to show you one final thing here. Say for example, you know we have X, Y, and Z uh, on the scale. Let's just uh, reframe that again. Say for example I wanted to move Y and Z but I didn't want to move X. You know they're all in the same place so you know I don't want to select the X keyframe right here. So I can right click on the scale X item and just select lock selection. And then what I can do is if I have them all selected like this, I can just click and drag, and let's just uh, hold shift and uh, move the keyframe over here, for example. And what's going to happen now is we only move the Y and the Z because they're not locked, but the X will remain over here. Okay, there you go. And if you want to unlock it, you can right click and select unlock selection. Okay, and then we have them all together just like that. Okay, so that's a really useful little uh, tip there if you're, you know, looking to only select certain curves. Let's go ahead and control Z and undo that and keep them all consistent there. All right, so that's really about all I wanted to show you in this tutorial, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot about uh, the different ways that you can, uh, you know, really uh, customize the curve on your, uh, or the path, rather, uh, using the curve editor for your object. Uh, there's a lot of uh, 
flexibility and a lot of uh, potential there for you know all sorts of various scenarios. All right, so thanks so much for watching again. Hopefully you learned a lot. Uh, make sure you check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com, and I hope to see you in the next video.